I hear people say that being authentic is all about being yourself. But I don't agree with that. You see, if you were to be yourself right now, you'd show up wearing a mask, presenting a censored version of yourself. A version of yourself that you've honed over the years to fit in and be accepted. I've seen it time and time again in ex-offenders, in workplaces around the world, in businesses, with professionals, leaders, public figures, actors, the LGBT plus community, in interactions within families and in intimate relationships. Let me take you back to where it all began. You've seen one of these before, right? A Russian doll? Well, this is you when you were born. This is the authentic, real you, the deeper part of you, the core of who you really are. When you were born, you were carefree with no responsibilities. You were happy, you were peaceful. And then as you grew up, you reached a point in your development where you became more conscious and you started to question the world around you. Things like, why does my brother get all of my parents' attention? Am I not loved? Am I not good enough? And why am I not as slim as everyone else in my class? And why does my family not have as much money as all my friends? You know, they've all got the latest iPhone, games console and laptop. What's that all about? What does this do? Well, let me show you. Here you are. Each thought that you've had creates a layer that distances you a little bit more each time from your true and authentic self, moving you further and further away from that connection to your authentic and true self. Let me ask you, have you ever seen authenticity on the school run? It's unheard of. In business, well, that's pretty rare, right? And socially, well, I don't know, maybe after a drink or three. Seriously, I can't think of anywhere where I don't see people wearing a mask. You show up wearing different masks for different environments and situations that you find yourself in. At work, in business, your relationships, socially, with family, you name it, you've got a mask for it. Because, let's face it, the last thing that you want is to look stupid, wrong, look like a failure, an imposter, or be vulnerable in any way. Think of it as privacy settings on your laptop. For this user, I'll let them see X, but for that user, I'm going to let them see X and Y. You censor how you look, your behaviours, your body language, your mannerisms, what you say, do, and how you communicate. You create a mask to protect you and to hide certain elements of the real you because you don't want to be vulnerable. You don't want your true feelings or your personality to be exposed and you don't want to be hurt. All you really want is to fit in and to be accepted. We tend to wear masks out of fear. And for me, the fear was about being outed in a few areas at work. Not being good enough at my role, being an imposter, and being gay in a heterosexual environment. I was forever dodging the humiliation of being outed at work. Talking about being gay, let's look at labels. From an early age, you begin to accumulate labels for yourself. Daughter, son, mother, father, gay, straight. Trans, boy, girl, non-binary, creative, unlucky, student, shy. You get the idea. And when somebody asks you what you do, you are a health worker, a hair technician, a teacher. When someone introduces themselves, you seek a label for them too. You instinctively want to make sense of who they are and their experiences in life. In some scenarios, these labels can be useful, but in others, they can be debilitating. You can easily become defined by your labels, but this simply adds another layer for you to hide behind, another mask that you can wear for the performance that you're delivering in your life. Your layers are built up from the social conditioning and the words that you heard as a child, the beliefs you formed at an early age, the judgments that other people have made about you, the criticisms that you hear, the masks you wear to protect yourself, the stories that you've created about moments in time, the labels that you've collected to describe who you are over the years, and lots more. <laughs> you are living your life from the surface of all of these layers, and not from your authentic self. This place on the outside is what referred to as someone's identity. Your identity is what people see of you on the outside. Your identity is a culmination of all the things that have happened to you, that you've acquired over the years, and that hide who you really are. 
which influence how you show up in your relationships, at work, with your family and in social groups. Your family and friends, they see the version of you that is carrying the hurt from your first lover leaving you, the grief from losing your grandparents, the childhood taunting that you experienced for being too... too fat, too ugly, too clumsy. Let's be clear here, you are not your identity. Your identity is a perception of who you are. Your authentic self is who you really are. I'm going to repeat that, it's really important to understand the difference. Your identity is a perception of who you are. Your authentic self is who you really are. The authentic you is underneath all of those layers, the good, the bad and the ugly. The authentic and real you is that peaceful, joyful, creative, loving, passionate soul underneath all of those layers. I want you to consider this cycle for a moment. You have a thought and this triggers a feeling. You act on these feelings which often causes more pain or stress. The usual approach to break the cycle is to change the feelings. We try to change those feelings by looking outside of ourselves. We throw food, alcohol, drugs, money, sex at it in the hope that it'll numb those feelings or give us some sort of temporary release. But what would have more impact is to tackle the thought that caused the feeling. You have around 80,000 to 120,000 thoughts per day. The majority of those, it's around 95%, are the exact same thoughts that you thought yesterday, last week, last month and last year. And now imagine that your thoughts are like a conveyor belt. They're constantly moving through your mind at quite some speed. Contrary to popular belief, there are no issues with thoughts. It's only when you attach to your thoughts, or as I call it, lasso a thought. <laughs> so when you lasso a thought, this is what causes you suffering, pain and fear. Let me repeat that, it's really important. It is not a thought that causes you suffering or harm. It's when you attach to the thought, when you believe it, and when you make it true for you in that moment. That is what causes you suffering. Your experiences, both past and present, impact on you at a deeper level than you realise, and you search for meaning in everything. Let me give you an example to illustrate this. In the early days of your relationship, your partner went out after work for a few drinks. They came home, kebab in hand, <laughs> unable to string a sentence together. Later, you found out that they were dancing a little too closely to someone in the office, and they denied it. Over the days that followed, you thought about it, you internalised it, and you created some sort of meaning that felt true to you in that moment for that particular experience. It may be that you now think, my partner can't be trusted after a drink. And once you fixed on to a meaning that made sense to you in that moment, you created a story around it. For instance, my partner doesn't love me and respect me. Every time they go out, they do something that upsets me or disrespects me. That is a story that you now tell yourself. Those stories you create, they impact on every situation, every conversation, and every experience that you have today. It's like they're hiding underneath the surface, steering your every move, thought, action, and decision. You begin to retell these stories to anyone that will listen or asks. And now, when your partner is late home from work, you think that they've gone out for drinks and a dance with someone that isn't you. You think they're lying and they're hiding things from you and you begin to collect further proof and evidence to support this story and this belief that you created. What have you done here? Instead of asking questions to fully understand what went on in this specific situation, you default to, my partner doesn't love and respect me. This happened before and therefore when that happens today, it means this. You've made that story you created in one moment in time a reality for your present and your future relationships. Going back to the cycle that I asked you to consider earlier. The story that you created in the past directly influences and impacts on your thoughts in the present moment and for your future, which then impacts on your feelings, which then impacts on how you act and behave in a given moment. In this situation, with these thoughts bubbling underneath the surface, it won't be a positive or a loving response. We create stories for everything, 
literally everything. We have stories about food, money, relationships, career, success, self-worth, health, friendships. It's a way for us to make sense of who we are, the people around us, and our experiences in life. When you look at the story that you tell about a certain area of your life, it gives you an insight into what you believe to be true about that. Imagine that you're out for a dinner with a friend and they ask you, so how are you feeling? You were poorly last time we met. Listen to what you say in response. This is what you believe to be true about your health, your body and your well-being. Let's be clear here. These stories that you've created, they can be both positive and negative. Some stories are really beneficial for you, but others can be destructive. The layers that I talked about earlier can consist of both the negative and positive stories that you've developed and experiences that you've had in your life. These negative stories can create barriers for you. You tweak how you present yourself to others to protect yourself, to fit in and to be accepted. Stories, they have a lot to answer for. They impact on your day-to-day patterns of thought and how you respond and act in any given moment. That's where you've been driven from, from this place of everything that you've ever experienced and internalised over the years. It's powerful stuff, eh? This is the basis of the authentic self process. We get to the core of the issue, the thought, the story, the conditioning, the layer. We work through it to release it and the power that it has over you. And then we explore and integrate powerful principles and strategies into your everyday life that reconnect you to your authentic self. Let me tell you about the authentic self process. I created the authentic self process in 2004 when I was teaching adult ex-offenders. The authentic self process is a powerful three-step system to release the masks that you wear and the stories that you've created so you can bring all of who you are to work and life. There are three steps to the authentic self process, raise, release and reconnect. The authentic self process begins by raising your awareness of the things that hold you back, the masks you wear, the labels you carry, all the layers that you've built up over yourself over the years, the conditioning you have from childhood, other people's expectations of you, the expectations you have of yourself, and the stories that you tell yourself and other people. The second step is to explore and release those unexamined thoughts and stories that you've created around past experiences and expectations. Through the soul work, which are a series of powerful questions, We strip away the power and hold these thoughts have for you in all areas of your life. The final step is to reconnect to who you really are, your authentic self. This is where we integrate my practical everyday strategies into your life. Each of these strategies, they support you to be your authentic self and strengthen your relationships with your colleagues, your team and your loved ones at home. They're designed to ground and centre you to slow you down and hold your attention in the present moment, as well as manifest the things that you want into your life. If you've heard of the five pillars of psychological safety that I created, you'll know that the authentic self process is the first of the five pillars, the foundational building block, if you like, for the five pillars of psychological safety. Because without understanding yourself, you're gonna struggle to bring all of who you are into work and life. Remember, your authentic self is who you really are, not your identity. We've been through what is your authentic self and I've talked to you about the three steps to the authentic self process. If any of this has resonated with you at all and you would like to reconnect to your authentic self, there are three ways that you can do that. The first is through the authentic self online course. The second is the authentic self one-to-one program. And the third is the authentic self retreat. I'm going to put the links to each of those in the description along with this video so you can find out more. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching.